and welcome to Dead Good Book Reviews. It's part three of my decluttering series and we've reached the culmination of my work in the last three videos. Today we're redoing my rewrites jar. I had the realisation while I was thinking about filming this that, like many of the things I film, I don't know how interesting this is going to be to watch. So I decided to add myself into it. Hopefully you can go and get a cup of tea, maybe something crafty, have me on in the background, let me talk about books to you, a bit of backstory to this adventure that we're about to go on together. Firstly, do you like my shelves? I redid them in the last two videos. They make me incredibly happy. I enjoy them greatly. This is uh, not doing well, but that's fine. When I was clearing out my shelves, I based my criteria of whether I would keep something or not based on whether I would reread it or not, whether it was something I wanted to pick up again or if it was just taking up room on my shelf and I was never going to look at it and someone would have to pack it away when I died. Therefore, I should make my reread jar off of this pile. Now, the tricky bit with this is I have a lot of stuff that is on my Kindle that will now not be included in this, but I think as a goal for 2020, which we are about to hit, it's coming like a freight train, um, I wanted to do physical because uh, I enjoy having them and they take up space in my house and if I'm not reading them, then they're just taking up space. Great, everything on the shelf I can reread next year. And then I thought about it and I was like, actually, realistically, I can't read more than five of these books every month, which puts us at 60. So I was like, okay, I need to find a way to pick 60 of these books that I want to reread. And there was a few ways I could have done it, but I ended up deciding to go by a random number generator. So I counted all my books and I got a random number generator to give me 60 random numbers between one and 167, inclusive. Uh, and then went through, worked out what books they all are, and now I'm gonna write all those things on little scraps of paper uh, while I talk to you about them. And then every month next year, we'll pick five out of this little jar uh, into which I will be putting these. Uh, I think I'm just gonna talk as I go. Um, so first up we have The Hogfather, which is of course by Terry Pratchett, uh, which I'm hoping I get either very early in the year or late in the year because it's quite a wintry book. Uh, if you haven't read it already, it's one of my favourite Terry Pratchett's of all time. Some of them will sound a bit odd because it's series out of order, but I have actually read everything on the shelf, so it shouldn't matter if I read them out of order. And a lot of them I reread in 2019, so it's just getting them to the forefront again. And next up we have The Bone Season, which actually I do need to reread because I have a feeling it must be next year, year after, that we'll be getting the fourth book in The Bone Season series which I'm quite looking forward to. I think it'll be good. I'm looking forward to like the start of the next set because the, the first three have an arc. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. Next up, we have The Dark Vault by V. Schwab. I read that this year, I believe. It must have been this year, um, which is a really good, it's actually two books. So make of that what you will. Um, it'll be interesting going back because this was one of the books that I actually tabbed. It's the only book on my shelf that I've tabbed. And it'll be cool looking back and trying to work out why did you tab this page, Judith? What are you talking about? Yeah, fun. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. There's a few Harry Potters on here because before they were just sort of sat on my shelf. Um, I'm opting to not read them in order. Chamber of Secrets, there we go. Um, because we'll just sort of see what happens. I don't talk about Harry Potter a lot on this channel because I'm not a huge fan of JK Rowling as a person and I don't want to be like, let's all support her. Uh, but we own them, uh, and I'd like to read the books again and recapture some of that nostalgia. Uh, Sorcery of Thorns, which was a fairy loop book from this year that I really enjoyed. It's a very good, very silly, uh, fun romp. Uh, really enjoyed. Yeah, looking forward to reading that again. Uh, the Tangled Lands. This was a bit of a wild card. I think it was the third in a three for two, and it's like a set of short stories. Um, I can't remember if they link together or not. I only really remember the first one, which is why it's a good thing I'm rereading it. Um, but yeah, set of short stories, there are like thorns. Uh, I remember it being good, so, and not too long. So there's a few kind of quite long ones on this list. Uh, so it'd be good to have a mix. Uh, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. One of my favorites, actually. It was like the first Harry Potter book I read when it came out, I would have been about eight. And I remember being in my like, year three classroom, like, head down desperate to finish it because I was like I'm gonna be one of those kids who finishes this so quickly because that was one of the things I thought was what important in life uh can you see how it has spread to the rest of my existence anyway <laughs> um record of a spaceborn few this I am looking forward to reading I'm gonna try and read closed and common orbit before the end of the year uh, and then that will mean that I've reread them in in sort of an order 
ish. Um, so that'll be fun. Diddly, the Wise Man's Fear. Oh, that's a long one. Patrick Rothfuss. Roth. I can never say it. Another a, good, a long one, but an interesting one. I, I I read this when I was just getting into adult fantasy, uh, and obviously thought it was amazing. I'll be interested to reread it now with kind of a bit more of a brain for other books. Um, I'm sure it'll still be fine. The Girl in the Tower. Yay! This is by Catherine Arden. Uh, this is the next book in the Winter Night trilogy. I reread Bear and the Nightingale last year. Really enjoyed it. Uh, this is one of my favourite trilogies. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Ooh, so that's ten. On to the next ten. Beyond a Darkened Shore, I talked about in my previous videos, uh, but I've mainly kept because I looked at the blurb and I was like, I don't remember reading this. And I have read it. I must have done. Um, but no recollection whatsoever. So there we go. Hero at the Fall by Alwyn Hamilton. Uh, I'd quite like to reread that whole trilogy at some point, but um, Here at the Fall is a good book. Um, it's the one I've read most recently, unsurprisingly, as it most recently came out. The Light Between Worlds. Oh, this book is so sad. Uh, Laura Weymouth. It's um, dealing with, effectively, it's not Narnia, but they basically it is. It's kids coming back from Narnia and having to deal with the consequences. Uh, it's really... I think a really good depiction of what it's like to both have depression and know somebody who has depression and the kind of struggles of that. I thought it was really good. Uh, a Gathering of Shadows. Is the second book? Yes, second book in the Shades of Magic series um, by B. Schwab, which I've been meaning to reread, so that works out well. State of Sorrow. I reread this recently. Um, I say recently, within the last year. Um, and it's really, really good. And I think I will keep rereading it until the day I die because it's an excellent book. And also I've made the decision to keep two copies of it, so I better get my shelf space worth, I suppose. Uh, Once in Future. This one I am looking forward to rereading because the first time I read it, uh, I, I didn't really enjoy it, I suppose. I liked the concept and I liked how gay it was, or queer it was is a better umbrella term. Um, but yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of the writing, but I'd quite like to reread it just to see how I feel going in the second time. Daughter of the Pirate King. Oh, good. This was. Sorry, can't write and talk. Uh, this is one of the first books that I got like really excited about reading um, when I first joined the blogging community. It was like, I think it had just come out or something, and there was a lot of hype surrounding it, uh, so I really wanted to read it. Uh, and now I am both, and they're both really good, and I haven't reread them probably since 2018, so that will be really good to read. Uh, the Orphanage of Gods. This is essentially a reread that will justify me keeping the hardback special edition, because I don't remember liking it too much, but I think a reread might cement it in my mind. And whether I was just in a bit of a YA slump at the time. Speaking of YA slump, uh, Aurora Rising, um, which a copy of was gifted to me by a friend, uh, who didn't enjoy it and I thought it was okay it was nowhere near as good as the Lumini which is really sad um but I'm hoping that a uh, follow-on book will be good I think sometimes books that involve like an unlikely band banding together I suppose um often they get better as series go on so I'm interested to see whether with the addition of another book it would get better um we'll have to see and Holy Sister is book 20 of this 60 book list uh, Holy Sister is the third book in the Book of the Ancestors series by Mark Lawrence. It's right at the top of this one. I like it. I listen to this on audiobook. It's the Red Sister trilogy are kind of my go to sleep audiobooks because I know exactly what happens and it doesn't matter. Uh, so that will certainly get reread next year uh, without a doubt. Right, on to 21 King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. This one I am looking forward to because I read this as part of my Book a Day in June challenge uh, and I love the Book A Day in June challenge, it's one of my favourite things I do in the whole year, but it does mean that sometimes you read books faster than you want to, and that one I'd quite like to read a little bit slower. Now I Rise, which is the second book in the Conqueror saga. I reread this last month, um, so it's very fresh in my mind, so hopefully we won't get that till later in next year. Um, and if we do, if it comes up in January or something, I might swap it out for Bright We Burn to finish the trilogy. But yes, love that trilogy, happily to re happily to reread. Happy to reread uh, Secret of the Sirens, another one I've read very recently um, by Julia Golding. It's one of my most nostalgic reads. Hello, Red Kites. One of my most nostalgic reads. Love it. 
I will happily reread. Uh, Clash of the Sky Galleons. This is the first of the uh, Edge Chronicles that I'll be rereading. Assuming I pulled this out first. Who knows? Um, I'd love to reread them all and in order, but for now, it's going in the randomization jar. Uh, uprooted by Naomi No, uprooted by Naomi Novik. Um, one of my favourite books to reread ever. Will happily reread. Uh, a lot of my favourites came out in this. It was interesting. Um, and then came the flood, which I think I called by the wrong name in a previous one of these videos. Um, this is by Lacey Roop. It is a poetry book and it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, and what I might do if I pull this out is do like, I'll read a poem a day for the month or something like that. Sweet Black Waves by Sarah Rask. Rask? I don't know where anything is anymore. This one, I want to, basically I want to decide if I want to buy the sequel. Um, so I'm rereading it to make that decision a bit easier. Mirage, which I remember as being a really good blend. It's by Samaya Dowd, I think. I remember being as a really good blend of fantasy and sci-fi in a way that doesn't often work. So yes, like that. Uh, the Starlight Barking. If you've not come across The Starlight Barking, it is the sequel, the official sequel, written by Jodie Smith, of 101 Dalmatians, and it's completely mad. So if I pull that out, when I pull that out, because this jar will be empty by the end of next year, uh, I will do a dedicated video to it, because it's one of the funniest books in the universe. And last but not least, Gemina, which I did reread very recently. Uh, last month, in fact. So if I pull this out, Early next year, I will switch it out for Obsidio. That's us at the halfway point. Who is proud? Daughter of the Siren Queen. This is a sequel to Daughter of the Pirate King. Uh, again, uh, a fairly enjoyable sequel. I think I liked it less than the first book. It went very romance focused, which wasn't what I wanted to read at the time. But maybe in a reread, knowing that's coming, that will be much better. This Cruel Design, which uh, the third book will be out by the time I pull these out, I think. I think the third book is out early next year. So that'll be a really good reread. I recently reread this mortal coil uh, and it was amazing so that'll be good. Uh, Mask of Shadows will be a well-timed reread because hopefully I will read the sequel to that Rune of Stars fairly early next year. That was one I purchased in, it will have been in my Galanx Fest haul. Magic for Liars. This one was one I definitely wanted to reread um, because I think it'll be interesting rereading it being aware, and I should have known at the time, that the author is non-binary. I think that'll be a really interesting lens through which to read it. There's a piece of hair in my face lens through which to read it. Uh, Storm Chaser, another Edge Chronicles classic. Like I haven't read those books since I was a child uh, and by child I mean probably like 13 would have been around about the time I would have last picked them up. This jar is getting very full. I did these with paper last time and now they're card. It's fine, we'll make it work. Inheritance, which is the last book in the Inheritance Cycle, which are the Aragon books. Um, I may audiobook this one because uh, I do have the audiobook. It's quite long um, but it's a good audiobook, I enjoy it. The Seafarer's Kiss. Comparatively, a short one. Um, I didn't like the sequel, but it's Bisexual Mermaids, and uh, who doesn't want bisexual mermaids in their life? If you, if that's you, then you should probably not follow this channel. The Wrath and the Dawn. Uh, Wonder Woman Warbringer, second Lee Bardugo book. See, it's interesting, before I started this exercise, it would have been far more likely to pull Lee Bardugo, because I had the Grisha trilogy, but I opted to unhaul those. Eldest, another Inheritance Cycle book. If I pull those in the same month, that's going to be an intense month of reading for me. Um, Eldest is one of my favourites. I think it's probably the one I've also read. No, actually, maybe it's not one of my favourites. Eldest is probably the one I've read least often um, because I didn't own it for a long time. And then I had an audiobook version, but one of the CDs was missing. It was a phase of my life where that happened quite often. Uh, a Gathering of Shadows. Wait, have we already had that? We have already had that. Okay, let's make that a Conjuring of Light. There were a couple of double ups and clearly I missed one. So that's a Conjuring of Light, third book in the Schwab's Darker Shade of Magic series. Uh, Cinder, Marissa Mayer. Um, the one book in that series that I own on in physical copy, not on Kindle. There you go. Philosopher's Stone, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Um, a classic. Maybe I'll read my Latin edition that's at my parents' house. The Winter Nights, one of my absolute favourite Edge Chronicles books, uh, and the only one I own in hardback, which make of that what you will. Brightly Burn, oh see this is already in here, we'll have to work out how we fudge some of these. 
this is the last book in the Conqueror Saga by Kirsten White. Uh, it's a very good book. I enjoyed it greatly. It came out this year. The Night Circus. I feel like I don't have to explain The Night Circus to anyone. It's Erin Morganston. Uh, it's one of the most well-known. Mm. It's like people put it in YA. It's not, it's adult fantasy, but it, it reads very YA. It's a crossover book if you're looking for one of those. People really love it. I really love it. I think it's really good. The Expanded Companion Guide. Uh, this one is a bit of an outlier in my shelving system. Uh, it's like a little companion guide to go with L.L. McNeil's The Nari series, but I'm interested to read it when I, especially because I will hopefully have finished that series very soon. God's Grave, another one I've reread fairly recently, uh, so hopefully we don't pull this early next year. Second book in the Neverlight Chronicles, Beyond the Deepwoods, first book in the Edge Chronicles series. That will be a real nostalgic moment, rereading that for sure. Runelight by Joanne Harris, something of a, using this reread as a decision whether to, as a decision as to whether or not I keep the book. Fly by Night, I'm very excited to reread. That's the one with the uh, goose, which I choose to believe that the um, goose game was based off, because it is a very horrible goose. The Graces by Laura Eve uh, was a Christmas present last year, maybe the year before. Very lovely book, uh, lovely plot twist in it. House of Shattered Wings by Aliette de Bodard. Um, I talked about already about how I want to reread that series, so it's kind of perfect that that first book got picked. Uh, Girls Made of Snow and Glass which is a uh, Snow White retelling that I, again, I ordered for Christmas, or got for Christmas even, um, and I've been meaning to reread because I read it very quickly and I'd like to explore it a little bit more. Um, it does a lot with mother-daughter bonds, which I think is good. Uh, going Postal, yes. Um, Terry Pratchett, it's my, I've said it before, it's the book I recommend you start with if you've not read Eddie Pratchett before and you're not sure if you'll like it or not. I think it's very clever. Uh, Smoke Gets In Your Eyes. I've read this month, uh, which is why it's on my shelf currently. Memoir of Kate Caitlin Doughty, Doughty, I'm not sure. Absolutely amazing. Just absolutely loved it. I cried. I laughed. It was it was good, 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 good. Uh, Aragon. It's just dragon with an E. Um, I laugh every time, but I genuinely didn't realise until I was about 20. Uh, the Song Rising. See, we'll have the bone season and we'll have Song Rising. I may have to like add in the mime order just to feel accomplished next year. The Caged Queen, which is the sequel slash companion novel to The Last Namsara, the third book of which is out soon. You see me reading that very soon. And last but not least, Our Dark Duet, which is the sequel to this savage song, which is B.E. Schwab's YA duology, Monsters of Verity. That's 60 books. You sat through 20 minutes of me writing 60 book titles down. Are you okay? Um, no, this is really exciting. I'm gonna um, take all these out, mix them around, put them all in again, so that I can properly pick them next year. Uh, but yes, through all of 2020, when I do my TBR videos, I will be picking five books out of here every single month. Uh, so you can look forward to that. Thank you so much for joining me for this three video series. It's been a long day for me, uh, and I expect a couple of weeks of editing, probably. <laughs> um, but uh, it's been a real pleasure doing this. My shelves feel fresh and clean and nice and everything feels good. Uh, and I have a lovely pile of things that will possibly show up on my Twitter uh, if you want to obtain any of them. If you liked this video, if you liked this series, if you want to see more of me, this face, right here, um, then you can like, you can share, you can subscribe, uh, you can comment. All those things really help me out. You can follow me on all of my socials and I will see you in the next one.